about the, the press essence of God, heaven's help. The press essence of God, heaven's help. I love the press essence, the presence of God. It is the dearest and most wonderful thing that any of us could experience. I think it would do us well to look back in history, certainly biblical history, to remind ourselves of the honor that we have of being in the press essence of God. You have to stop and think about um, in the Old Testament how complicated it was and how limited it was for people to actually feel and have access to the press essence of God. It's pretty familiar to us. We come in here today and the crowd keeps growing and there's no more seats and people are standing on the aisle and we're just so glad that you got here. We've been waiting for you. Welcome. And as we come in, we see our friends and we should feel good and have fun when we come to church. And sometimes maybe we get a little familiar with the idea that it has not always been this way. That people could not always come into the presence of God, uh, certainly uh, marred and scarred and tainted and tilted, that the presence of God demanded perfection because God's presence is pure and it's holy. And when divinity touches humanity, it cannot survive unless, unless, unless Something has been worked out that allows humanity and divinity to be in the same place. And I'm going to explain that to you in just a few moments. I love the presence of God. I try to, not trying to brag, but just trying to um, encourage you, provoke you. I try to spend a, at least an hour every day in the presence of God. I don't like to get out of bed. I get out of bed because I'm 60 years old and uh, then I go back to bed. <laughs> and then I just linger there and I turn on the soundtrack to the movie of my worship. And I perform before heaven. And I've learned how to open up myself up and how heaven opens up to me and to get into the presence of God. Now, I don't want to make any radical statements here that would offend anybody, but you know me enough to know that I like to push the envelope, especially at one church, because I think you're tough. I think you're radical. I think you're edgy. So I get a little edgy around you. <laughs> I love this Bible. I love this Bible, but I also recognize that it's just but black ink written on white paper and that it must be interpreted by the Spirit. That in fact the letter killeth, but it is the Spirit that brings life. This Bible has been used to divide more people and to create more tension and to create judgment and criticism among each other in the Christian community, that it can almost be discouraging. What Bible are you reading from? And that's why I understand that the Holy Spirit is our greatest guide, that if you've only got an hour to be with God, spend at least half of it in worship so that your eyes can be open to understand what the word is saying. We have a tendency with our brain to not read the Bible as it's meant, but by the way we are already bent. And thus we keep coming up with creeds and doctrines that instead of rightly dividing the word, we divide each other using the word. That wasn't even in my sermon. I don't know where I'm going right now. I'm just... I'm just out there, I'm just treading water. I'm trying to get out there deep enough to start this sermon. 
So I love the presence of God. I, I've loved it since I was a child. Now, you have to understand, I was raised in church. I'm 60 years old, and I've been going to church at least five to six times a week for 60 years. So I got a lot of church in me. And the church I was raised in was old-time, apostolic, Pentecostal, strict, hard, legalistic. We don't smoke. We don't chew. There's nothing we can do. We are happy people. Yes, we are. I mean, we had no television in our home. Ladies couldn't cut their hair, no makeup. Jesus, help us. And uh, we couldn't go to baseball games. Uh, we couldn't uh, organize sports was of the devil, I guess. I, I don't know where it all come out. But, uh, and, and, and it was very, very strict. And all, really, our own entertainment was going to church. So we went to church on Sunday morning and, and then took a nap and then went back to church on Sunday night. And then we went to men's prayer meeting on Monday night, went to school Tuesday, came back. Tuesday, my parents went to visit. They were the pastors, the sick and the shut-in, while we cleaned up the church. Wednesday night was Bible study. Thursday, uh, had a break. Friday was praise and worship night. Saturday, we went out all day knocking on doors, getting people to church. My dad had a bus route, and he would pick up kids and then jump out of the bus and get on the pulpit and preach. And, uh, and we do it all over again. Sunday, Sunday afternoon nap, Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, take a bath once a week whether we needed it or not, and here we go. It's our lives. It's what we did. Sunday mornings were great. I love to go home on Sunday afternoons and have a little sleep and come back. Sunday nights were fun, though, now. Sunday nights could really be a blast. The choir sang on Sunday night. And we had, you know, we had, we called a Holy Ghost night. Now, now we say Holy Spirit. But back in those days, it was Holy Ghost. You don't know, I don't think, you don't even have any idea what I'm talking about. And, and, and back in those days, if the service would really get going, if the choir could sing and, and, and really be anointed and, and the people would respond, sometimes we'd have a, what a, a good service was when there was no preaching. Because my dad was the preacher. It's like, he's boring. Let's have a move of God. <laughs> and if we had a move of God and people got the Holy Ghost, and, and then, then we'd go out for pizza after church. <laughs> and, and, and if there was a bunch of people that got the Holy Ghost, well, we'd stay up and talk about it so late that we wouldn't have to go to school the next day. That's why when my dad made us pray before church and we had to pray while we peeked at all the saints' kids playing, we had to be in there praying. But it worked because we'd pray, oh, God, give us Holy Ghost tonight so we can have pizza tonight. Give us such Holy Ghost, we'll talk about it so we don't have to. My dad owed the growth of that church to us kids. Glory to God. We didn't have a good service. We'd go home and have bologna sandwich. My dad wasn't happy. Nobody was happy. And we had even indicators of when the Holy Ghost was going to move. We just, we just knew. Uh, a lot of times when the choir would sing, you see, I was, our church was, uh, I was raised near Gary, Indiana, and Chicago. And so uh, we, we had a little bit of something going on in our church, you know. Actually, 60 years ago, before a lot of other churches had it, and uh, my mom used to lead the gospel choir, and we used to get a lot of our songs from from uh, Ralph Good, pastor from the First Church of Deliverance in Chicago. And one of our favorite songs that would really get our church going is the song Joy Bells. He keeps those joy bells ringing, ring, ring, ring. He keeps those joy bells ringing, ring, ring, ring. He keeps those joy bells ringing, joy bells ring in, in. So uh, this is the best part. The ladies. Ring, 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 men. Ring, 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 ring. And I'd be over there on the front. Ring, 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 ring. <laughs> and then we had people in the church that we could spy on that we knew they had like the sensitivity. We knew if we were going to have a Holy Ghost night, we knew who would touch it first. The first would be Brother Floyd. He was one of our ushers in the back. 
and we'd kind of look through the crowd. We'd look at the choir. And, and, and while that was going on, we'd just be watching Brother Floyd because if this happened right here, we'd like, Holy Ghost night. I'd be like saying my mama, I'd say, come on, sing it again. Ring, ring, ring. Because it'd go from the hand to the foot. And then the men up there would see Brother Floyd doing it, and they start doing it. And then Sister Edith. Woo! She'd sit right over there, and when the Holy Ghost would come on her, she'd start this. And if they kept singing, ring, 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 And I need the Holy Ghost night pizza. This was so much a part of our life that on Tuesdays when my parents would go visit the sick and shut in that we would, they would lock us in the church and then we would have to clean the church and we learned how to do it really quick so we could play church. Because we didn't have TV. We didn't have no like Batman. We didn't know any of that stuff. But we knew Brother Floyd. Let me do Brother Floyd. I get to do Sister Edith. And we play church. And that's what we did. I was nine years old when Brother Upton Evangelist was having Pentecost Holy Ghost nights. And we were having church every night. And he said, Phil, you need to come to the altar and get the Holy Ghost. And I said, yeah, man, let's get the ghost. Come on. Let's get it. I went down to the altar. Now, you, you, we, we have so much class now. Back in the days, I don't know where we got all this, but we used to tarry, tarry for the Holy Ghost. And... and uh, and so it, here's the way it worked. You got one sister would get a hold of one hand. Thank you there, sister. You get a brother, you get a hold of this other hand. And then you get another sister from behind you patting you on the back. And then you get another one that just got your hand, right hand, right on your gut, right on your belly. And then you got a couple getting in your ear. And it went something like this. Hang on, Phil, hang on. You're almost there, hang on. And over here. Let go, Phil. Let go. Hang on. Let go. Let him have your tongue. Say la, 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 la. I mean, you had to get the Holy Ghost in self defense. <laughs> I did all that stuff and went downstairs. And Brother Upton went downstairs. He said, Phil, I thought you said you were going to get the Holy Ghost. And I said, I already went for it. Nothing happened, man. He said, get back up there. And I went back up there. And I was trying to hang on. And I was trying to let go. And I was trying to survive the, the hit on the back and the hit in the gut. And the four people telling me what to do. And I don't know, in spite of all of it, at nine years old, the heavens opened over me. Something got a hold of me. Something came on me, went down inside me. I began to speak in a language I had never heard for 45 minutes. They said I went from everything from speaking Chinese to other languages. All I know is that I had got a dose of the Holy Ghost. I had got in the presence of God. I had come to my visitation with God and I would have never and would never forget it yes and though that did happen a nine year old's heart gets bigger and larger and outgrows that experience but by 14 years of age being in the church orchestra which my father made us you know my dad could have gone to jail for the way he raised us <laughs> oh God thank you Jesus and, you know, you're, you're going to live in this house, you're going to play the saxophone or, or whatever. You're going to find something, you're going to play it. All right, so I learned the saxophone. I learned how to put it together, and I learned how to play C to C. And then I was in the church orchestra. 
And honestly, some of you that know music, I was in the church orchestra and I was playing. Sometimes I could find some notes and sometimes I couldn't find the notes and I was so frustrated. And I just said to my mom, I said, Mom, sometimes I can find notes on it, but it's like I got a, sh a, a short or something in my saxophone. And she said, well, did I teach you your sharps and flats? And I said, my what and what? <laughs> and if you're not laughing, you don't know what they are either. <laughs> By that time, though, I had already developed the reputation. Man, that little white boy knows how to play the blues. <laughs> I was like, dude, I'm just trying to find the note. <laughs> and then the drummer left, and I ended up becoming a drummer for the church. And up until that time, I still had Holy Ghost here, outgrew it, and was expanding my mind to understand things. And I wanted to learn how to understand the press essence of God. And I mocked my parents. I imitated my parents. I lifted my hands like they did. I sang like they did. But oh, on one Sunday night, while I was playing the drums, the heavens opened over me again. This time I stood up and without missing a beat with one on the foot pedal and the other on the top hat and my hands keeping the beat. I slipped past a veil and entered into the world of worship. I found that just beyond the thin veil of our little minds lays a world of worship that everything that God is and everything that God can do is available through the economy of worship. And if you ever get a revelation of what it means to touch God, to find your spirit and let it touch God's spirit, you will have an explosion between heaven and earth that will radically change your life. And you know I'm a fan of Revelation. And every time heaven is mentioned in the book of Revelation, it's always in the context of heaven descending. Never us going up, but it coming down. Because heaven is one of those vague words that have a variety of meaning that you have to allow yourself to find the context to understand what heaven is it talking about. The heaven of the sky, the heaven of creation, the heaven of God, you must, because there is no distinctions in the word of the Greek or the Hebrew, heaven. Heaven is, yes, a place, a place that you and I will go to one day, as Devon Franklin so well did the movie Heaven is for real, we know that heaven is a place. And in fact, it's that knowing that heaven is a place that allows you to get more understanding and value of where you are now if you can believe of that which is coming there. But heaven is more than a place we're going to. Heaven is also the persons of the Godhead. Because when Jesus was on the earth, people loved him. Let me build a foundation here. Y'all with me right now? You, you, you follow me? When Jesus was here on earth, actually, he represented heaven on earth. That's why he would pray when you pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He was trying to tell us, Heaven can be a part of your world. Let me tell you, some of us have got too much hell going on. We're fighting hell too much. I've come here today to tell you, it's time to get the hell out and get the heaven in. It's time to get heaven's help. It's time to get the press essence of God impacting our lives. Young people, that's a legal way of saying a cuss word. Get it right or you'll get soap in your mouth. Get the hell out so you can get the heaven in. Huh. 
Children love to be, listen to me, listen to, I'm helping you. I'm coming to a prophetic word for you. I'm going to help you, sir. You're watching me. You're already thinking about tomorrow. I'm going to help you. Please come with me. Let me show you. Jesus was trying to say, when you touch me, you're touching heaven. When you touch me, the disciples wondered, where did he go? Every morning he wakes up before we do. He comes back and says, we must go about our father's business. And when he does, children run to him and laugh and giggle, sit on his lap. What a cool Jesus he must have been because children hate boring religious people. Sinners loved Jesus. Sinners loved Jesus. If you don't have any sinner friends and all your friends are Christian, you need a little more Jesus. That was a PGA clap, but that's all right. That's not part of my message. Something happened. Watch me. This is for you. This is for you. He's setting you up. He would say words, and he would say, Jesus, where did you get that? He said, I'm not speaking these words from me. These words don't come from me. They come from the Father. Whoa. Your Father must be something. A blind eye is brought to him. A child with an eye that can't be seen out of. And Jesus puts his hands upon the blind eye and says, open. And the eyes open and the child can see. Jesus, how did you do that? And Jesus said, I didn't do it. The Father did it through me. You see, Jesus was fully human. Watch me. A little boring right now, but it's going to get to you in just a second. Stay with me. Stay with me. You see, Jesus emptied himself. God. All of it was drained out of him until all that was left was flesh and blood. And all he was was a human just like us, subject to everything just like us. And when he would get out of bed and go to a secret place, he would get with the Father, the Father would come over him, fill him with words, fill him with the ability to do works. He would then come back, and every miracle he did, he did not do. Jesus did not do one miracle. The miracles he did was the work of the Father. The words that he spoke were the words of the Father. You need to get this. Then one day, we're almost there. You're doing good. Then one day, after crowds were coming, the world was shaken by this man, Jesus. And then one day, Jesus says, I'm going away. No. No, you don't. Because we're sick of religion and we're sick of judgment and we're sick of having our brains beat out by evil. We're sick of being oppressed. We're sick of being broke. We're sick of having habits that we can't break. We're sick of our hearts being broken. We're sick of the oppression of the enemy. We're sick of mourning and ashes. We're sick of shame. And Jesus said, I know, I know, but let not your hearts be troubled. I'm going to go away. To prepare a place for you. That where I am, you may be also. Now, wait just a second. I don't want to mess with anybody's theology right now. I don't. I just, I, I, but, but you are edgy people and you push me to the edge and it's your fault. <laughs> I just want to tell you something that, say heaven is a place. Say heaven is a place. But it's more than a place because Jesus was not talking about a place in John 14. He was talking about preparing a place that where he and the Father had been hanging out, you could go there too. In fact, after talking about preparing this place, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. When he got done talking about this place, he then said, don't weep 
for I will be gone a little while, and a little while I will come back to you. Not you come to me, that where my Father and I will make our home. Watch this. This is going to, your mind, we will make our home in you. See, Ecclesiastes says in 3.11 that when God created us, he put eternity in our heart. But it was locked. We couldn't get access to eternity. You know why? Because unholy humanity cannot be in the presence of a holy divinity. There must be a prepared sacrifice. There must be a prepared protocol. Oh, this is going to make your Easter the best ever. You see, real quickly, let's go back and tell you a quick story. You need to get this story because it's going to help you. Because when we start prophesying and praying in a moment, you're going to have this sense of awe, this sense of good fear that's going to awaken you and sensitize you because you're a bit numb right now. You're unfamiliar with really what you are in right now and what you have access to. And I'm about to just give you a new, fresh sensitivity of what you had. Can I tell you that according to Second? Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12 through 18, that the Bible says that what Moses had when he went to the mountain and he saw the glory of God and God's hands writing on the tablet and he took the tablets and he came down to the people and his face was shining and his face was glowing. Can I tell you that God said that is not even worthy to be compared. That when you and I lift up holy hands without wrath and doubt and begin to worship God, we have an encounter with the Holy Spirit that they did not have. King David didn't have it. The prophets didn't have it. You and I have it. So if you want the Reader's Digest of the version of Le uh, Leviticus, go to Hebrews 9, 8, 9, and 10. And it works something like this. Watch carefully. Here we go. There was a protocol to the presence of God. It started right here. There was a gate. You had to prepare a sacrifice, and you would enter into the gate. You would enter into a court where the sacrifice would go on an altar. You would then cleanse your hands. And then you would get the blood of the sacrifice and you would go to a double layer, double, double tent. The first tent you went into was called the holy place. The second tent was the holies of holies. God lived in a box. He lives everywhere, but his consecrated, concentrated Manifest presence lived in the Ark of the Covenant. God in a box. Once a year. Get this. This is you, 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 won't, you won't get your miracle if you can't get this in the backdrop of what you're about to get access to in a minute. So this is the boring part, but you gotta get it. Once a year, a priest would be selected by a lotto system. 55, 16, 2301. Ah! I won! Ah! I won! Yeah, because you got to go through the protocol perfect. You got to get the right sacrifice. You got to walk into the court just right. You got to wash the hands just right. The protocol has to be perfect. You have to go through the one tent. You have to manage the lampstand and the Aaron's rock. You got to, man and then you got to go into that place one man once a year into that holies of holies. And if there's one dot not dotted, not one T crossed. Man, they would, history said, they would put a rope around your ankle. So if you didn't get it right, they couldn't even get you. They'd have to drag you out. They put a rope around their ankle, and then the priest wore bells around their robes. 
They were the first to wear bell bottoms. I know, bad joke, but <laughs> it actually had a meaning. Chingling, 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 chingling. else is on the back. Yeah! Yeah, our sins are forgiven for another year. Hey, everybody, he made it. And that's the way God dealt with man's shame, poverty, lack, brokenness. That was the way God did. He really didn't fix man. It was a credit card accumulating interest. Until Jesus would say these words, I'm closing, I'm closing, movement, I'm closing, I got three, I'm closing, right here, this is the first, here it comes, ready, ready, watch me, watch me, here it comes, ready, Jesus says, I'm going away, I'm going to prepare a place that where I have been with the Father, you will be also. I wish I had the time to teach you that Jesus walked into the gate, into the court, offered his body as a sacrifice, went in to the holy place, offered your sin sacrifice once and for all. Every sin you ever committed and ever will commit Jesus once and for all. Laid the sacrifice for that on the altar. And that's why on the day of Pentecost when Jesus had prophesied, you're thirsty, here's a glass of water. You're dying, I'm going to put a well inside you. And this he spoke of the Holy Spirit who had not yet been given because he had not yet been glorified. Because you cannot receive the Holy Spirit until Jesus lays his body on the line and absorbs your sin. And as you come before God with your humanity and with your mess and with your dirty hands and with your dirty deeds and with your discouragement and shame, Jesus absorbs that. He is your lawyer. He is your propitiation. He is your mediator. Why? You were sleeping last night. He was making intercessions for you. You got to bed at 2 o'clock this morning and your hands are dirty. By the time you woke up, your intercessor had already been making inter. So you can walk up here, raise your hands and not be struck dead but the presence of God would fill you from the top of your head. Woo! I got to move on. So you see, God's heaven is a place. Heaven is a person. Heaven is a position. You are seated. Excuse me. Take your seat. Where? Where? You are seated in heavenly places. Is, is, is this my seat? I, I feel pretty powerful. I'm like on the ring side. I'm, I'm like in the, at the Lakers game. It's right on the bench. I'm right here. I, I think somebody put me in by accident. You are seated in heavenly places. You now have power and authority. Heaven is a place. Heaven is a person. Heaven is a position. 
heaven is a perspective. Because when you see through heaven's eyes, you see a whole other view of life. You see through things, and you see things through because you have an anointing of holy perspective. Are you getting this? Yeah. Heaven is the press essence of God. My second closing. The press <laughs> essence of God. When you worship, you see, worship has the same protocol as the old shadow and type. You enter into worship through the gate of thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. And then you walk a little farther into the court of praise. Then you enter into the holies of holies. Now, this one is small. You don't get in here with a group. This is your one-on-one. -on -one. Worship. And when you begin to worship, the Spirit of the Lord fills this place. The atmosphere is changing. You see, 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 this is the external. is feeling pretty good. This music is great. I like the music of this church. Yay, God. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Come on in. Praise. This is the internal. Your soul doth magnify the Lord. Your thoughts and your will and your emotions are now laid bare on the altar like a sacred price of praise. Woo! My soul feels good. God, there's a place where the presence turns into the press essence. When I begin to worship and I find my voice of worship when all the things of this earth grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. I worship you. I worship you. My external drifts away, my internal drifts away, and my spirit shout, rejoice in God, my Savior. And you, you were made to worship. In fact, if I could trace you down, to your original creation, I could show you that before you were in your mother's womb, God knew you. You have already been in his presence. You're much like the boy, the four-year-old boy that moved over to his baby sister in the crib, three days old. Mama peeked in. What's he doing? The little boy said, sis, tell me about God. I've almost forgotten. You have already been around the throne. That's why when you give in to worship, when you break past the external and internal, you'll feel like you're... Uh, oh. Yeah. Only those that are 50 know what I'm talking about. You can have all the Reese cups you want. But only when you get in God's presence will you know that you are at home and this is where you belong. And this is where 
change takes place. If you get stuck in the external, good luck in your discipline. If you get stuck in the internal, good luck in your process. But if you ever get here in the holies of holies, the Bible says we are changed, not by discipline, although that's good, not by mind over matter, although that's good, but even by the Spirit of the Lord. So addictions are going to drop off in the next few moments. Watch, 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 watch. So now broken hearts are going to be mended. Even now the mender is here. Keep talking, Phil, because here I go. I'm going to do my work now. Try to keep them focused, Phil, because I'm going to her. I'm going to him. I'm going to put my hands upon them. Put my hands over their broken heart. And I'm going to heal them today. The atmosphere is changing here. For the presence of the Lord is nice. God is going to do a work. And the last manifestation of the Holy Spirit is the prophetic word. It is when you get this Bible and you learn to get the voice that is already in there and you begin to vibrate the sound of that word and you start speaking the word prophetically and the word comes alive out of that Bible. Listen to me, a quick illustration. My daughter-in-law is a professor of exploratory music in San Diego, UC San Diego. Some pretty spectacular stuff she does. But in one of her concerts, she's a trumpetist, and she slid under a well mic piano. She got on her back, and she got the trumpet, and she hit a B sound. It took her three seconds. But when she found the pitch of that B, the sound wave vibrated and found the same note on the piano and without anybody touching it, you could hear the piano vibrating. Now listen, you're about to worship God and when you give forth a sound that matches the sound that is already in this place. <laughs> Miracle is happening. Presence of the Lord is here. Now, I'm going to close by giving you a prophetic word. Here it comes, here it comes. This is the prophetic word that Jesus gave when he went and fasted for 40 days and he came back. And the Bible says he opened up the book of Isaiah and he rolled it open. And this is the prophetic word Jesus gave. And if he was here today, this is what he would say. He's not, but I, his servant, shall give you this same prophetic word he gave 2,000 years ago, but now the atmosphere will bring it out of those pages and get ready because I'm about to prophesy over every person in this house. Isaiah 61. For the Spirit of the Lord is upon Phil Muncy as a servant of God because the Spirit of the Lord has anointed me and I'm going to prophesy good news to the poor. I'm going to say that lack and poverty and struggle and the oppression of poverty that you have been under, the lack, no attraction to favor, favor shut off, God says, I am going to give you good news. Favor and doors of financial opportunity. I'll show you where the fish is. I'll show you where the coin is. I'll show you the people that you need to meet. Hey, hey, hey. And he has sent me to heal your broken heart. I'm broken. You see, this is why you keep attracting broken people. You don't get in life what you want. You get in life what you are. And as long as you are broken, you will meet people that are broken. You'll think, oh, we're hitting it off. You're not hitting it off. It's one broken heart attracting another broken heart. 
you need to be made whole. Be thou made whole. And I've come to proclaim liberty. Not another set of disciplines. <laughs> Not another set of chains, but liberty from that addiction, but liberty to the captives. Come, come, come away from those addictions. Come, come. And I will open up the prison who are bound by past fear. And I have come today to proclaim the favor of the Lord upon this house. I have come to speak over your dry bones. I have come to say to your dead dreams, this is the acceptable year of the Lord. Favor. It is the day of my vengeance, says God, that I will put your enemies underneath your feet. And I'll cause you, one church, those of you that have been mourning, watch, even now as the prophet speaks, it shall be changed to comfort. Oh, I've come to console those who've been mourning in Zion. And I'm going to ask you today, give me, give me your ashes. Give me your ashes. Give me your ashes. Oh, I can't do this for everybody. Ready? Get your hands out like this if you want to participate. We're done. We just got seconds left. Get your hands out like this. If you want to stand and get this, we're almost done. You want this? Get your hands like this. I don't mean to be demanding. I got a mission. I got to finish quickly. Get your hands like this, please. Did I ask it nicely? It sounded demanding. Sorry. Here we go. Ready? Watch this. Turn them. Turn them. There. Feel the vulnerability? That's your ashes falling. That's your mourning falling. That's the spirit of heaviness dropping. Hey. Hey. That's the shame dropping. That's the shame falling. Now turn them, turn them. Receive the oil of joy for mourning. Receive the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You felt that? You felt that, didn't you? You feel the hands almost feel light? That they may be called children, trees of righteousness, and the planting of the Lord, that he, he may be glorified. And they shall rebuild the old ruins, and they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the ruined cities, and the desolation of your generations and bloodlines. And oh, strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. And the sons of the foreigners, they'll be your plowmen. And they'll be your vine dressers. But you shall be named the priest of the Lord. They shall call you the servants of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory you shall boast. Instead of shame. Put your hands down again like that. Come on, let it go. Let it go. Instead of shame. Turn them. Turn them. Double. Honor. Whew. Turn your hands again. Instead of confusion. Whew. Turn them again. You shall rejoice in your portion. 
excuse me, I'm not speaking to you, but unto God. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. And everlasting joy shall be theirs. It's time to give God prophetic worship like you've never done it before. Today, if you are here and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you've never made him Lord, it's all you got to do because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. All you got to do is say, Jesus, you're Lord. The rest is his job, and he takes the liberty to change. If you're here today and you do not have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, that doesn't mean you don't have the Holy Spirit, but watch me. You have the Holy Spirit, but watch me. You have the Holy Spirit if you've made Jesus your Lord. You have the Holy Spirit because you cannot even say Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Spirit. But you need the Holy Spirit to come up and on you. Up and on you. Until you are manifesting that beautiful gifts of the Spirit. If you want to make Jesus Christ your Lord, or you would like for me to pray for you to receive a baptism or a renewal of the baptism. I'm opening this altar right now. Come, 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 come. Come, 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 come. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Come. I'm going to pray a group prayer. Come on. Come on. I want Jesus to be my Lord. I can't live this life anymore like this. I need liberty. I need healing. I need my brokenness fixed. I need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I need Jesus to be my Lord. I need a renewing of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Woo. The atmosphere is changing. Say with me, everybody. Some of you couldn't get down here. Many are still coming. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. You died on the cross for my sins. God raised you from the dead. And now you have prepared a place for me that where you are, I can be also. Eternal life in heaven. A position of power here on earth. The baptism of your press essence and the power to speak the prophetic word I receive lift your hands you're about to receive right now I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit open up your mouth say hallelujah say it three times and then don't worry what it sounds like say it again now be filled be 